Well, welcome to On the Spot this week. I'm Tony Mulvey, analyst here at Freightwaves, joined by Mike, the dude, Michael Vincent. What's going on? I am special, as Anthony said. <laughs> you are. But I'm not an economist. No, neither am I. I like to play one sometimes on TV, yeah, but that's fun. about it. Dress up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, Michael, we're going to talk about the freight market, right? Obviously, we have our pricing power index that we release every Friday. Yeah. We took a dip down this week from 70 to 65, 65 being the lowest it's been since uh, July of 2020. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, I believe that. Yeah, yeah I was so, going to say July of what year are you going to 20, say? Yeah, 2020. That makes so sense. That we, makes saw, sense. we saw it's a couple. Amazing, though. Just call a couple dips in 2021 down to this level, April, early April being one of them. We saw kind of a blip in outbound volumes, rejections, kind, sure. of a, kind of a head fake, right? So we saw this. We've seen volumes in the past month take this almost like a nosedive. We've gone from over 15,000 to right 13 yeah, and, we were, and, a half and we were fooled before because we, we were looking at this this, this kind of coming down mm -hmm. and, and, and not calling it, hey, we're going to continue to go down. Cause yeah, exactly. We've been head faked before. <laughs> exactly. And, and we've kind of been in this trend for a little while. Yeah, so sure. What do you what do you think about volume levels? What, what do you think this this decline that we've seen in the past month? Uh, tells us kind of what's going on in the freight market. Oh, well, I mean, it's definitely softening, right? And we've been watching economic indicators for a long time. And again, those are way upstream for, mm -hmm. for me. And I, I have to lean on Anthony Smith often to explain them to me because I forget which one is, you know, which of these indicators, which sometimes a positive one actually means negative, et cetera. Right? You got to keep them straight in your mind if you're not looking at them all the time. But they've been weakening for a while, mm -hmm. right? And and uh, so it's starting starting to come home to roost. Yeah. I think things are. I mean, inflation's up, right? Yeah. Um, consumer sentiment's down a little bit. Uh, or a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it was low. Revolving levels. credit is up. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's, that's actually a really good lead in when you look at, I mean, we got Bank of America's credit card spending, uh, I guess two weeks ago now, early March. Sure. For, April, or for February. And it was still elevated, right? But you look at kind of the categories that it was elevated in. Gasoline, yeah. grocery stores, things like that. Apparel was interesting, down. Furniture spending down, so things that it's like so necessities are up, and that's where you're seeing the inflation, anyways. Yeah, exactly. So. And you're, I mean, it, inflation across the board, but like when you start adjusting those things, gas, they're still spending on it. It's, it's you have to, you, you, right? You, yeah, yeah, the you, things you have to, food and gas, you have to keep spending on. It. It's just ancillary things. Uh, I mean, clothing, you got to have clothing, right? Yeah. In, in most states, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's not new clothing, and replacing it is not something that For sure. is. And I think the interesting one was kind of in that, in, in the income gaps, right? So those, sure. those lower income, 50,000 below earners versus those 125,000 and up earners, how it's impacting them. It's kind of doing ex as you expect. Gasoline spending as a percentage, definitely higher, mm -hmm. but they're spending a bigger, I mean, that percentage is increasing. And it's more on credit cards, which is kind of the concerning part to me. Right, well, yeah, I think that is with everybody, right? Because yeah. we saw we saw the revolving debt start to start to start to come down, and and I remember speaking with Anthony and others about how we we're hoping that, you know maybe the American consumer is learning a little bit of a lesson right now, but no. Yeah, no, it seems they still like have to survive. I mean, that's the that's the thing. A lot of those people are in situations where like. I got to do it. Yeah. Hopefully, I can ride through this. But this is this is how we live. Exactly, and and that brings up uh, kind of what I want to talk about is. All right, freight volumes are coming down because of some of these impacts. Are, are, is our freight volumes coming because of these impacts? If the consumer continues to get strained, do freight volumes come down even further? Are we looking down to 2019 levels, which was obviously an awful year for trucking? But I mean, it's where where do we stop? I guess is the best question. I, you know, I, I I don't I don't know, but wherever it is, I bet it feels like nineteen mm -hmm. because, <laughs> because we've been at these because we've been at so, it's so high. Yeah. I mean, predicting where it, where it slows down and where where it bottoms out is is incredibly difficult. I don't know if anybody can do it accurately unless they're 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 lucky. Yeah. Right. I mean, and there's certainly better people to estimate that than I. Yeah. Uh, it feels like it could go lower and yeah. that's the scary part of it yes. the more optimistic says nah, I don't I don't know the, the, I think the saving grace really is the the consumer sentiment in, mm -hmm. in the American public and and worldwide people want there to be good mm -hmm. right so any good signs that come I think will be uh, in exponentially 
better in the mind or positive thought process of the consumer and the American public. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> no, I think everybody wants to look at the good things and not the bad things. They, 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 they absolutely do. But I mean, you've got inventory levels way high, mm -hmm. uh, right? That, that bullwhip effect looks like it, it occurred over mm -hmm. overstocking, et cetera. Inflation up, consumers coming down. Do we see deflation in a major way? Yeah. Is there this major sign wave? We always said there was going to be bumps and bruises on the way out of this. Oh, yeah. I think we're entering some of those bigger, more painful or obvious bumps and bruises. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you kind of have to plan for those. And it, it's hard to, when the things are so good, to plan for the bad, right? But it Nobody is wants to plan for the bad. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. But I think it leads into our kind of our next chart that we have here. It's yeah. our outbound tender reject index. Oh. And our out or our van contract rates, right? They've oh, moved okay. in the spread, right? So yeah, we've that. got uh, our contract rates in the blue line up at all-time highs. I think two dollars right. and ninety-six cents a mile. Uh, rejection rates down at 50, just under sixteen percent. I think they're at fifteen point nine percent there on that left in that green yeah. line. And what, obviously, our contract rates are on a kind of a two-week lag, right? So those mm -hmm. initial, we're still looking at two weeks ago what those rates were. Sure. And that was right around the time where we saw this rapid decline in rejection rates, right? Obviously, declining yeah. rejection rates, increased carrier compliance, likely due to higher contract rates. But what do you think when you see contract rates still kind of climbing and at these elevated levels and we're seeing rejections uh, Obviously well, I, I mean, I mean, it, it it's delayed, and mm -hmm. the, you still have. A, I think you still have a lot of shippers that are being affected by the fact that the supply chain is, has not been fixed yet. It's still there's still a lot of clogs in the pipes, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you've got 60 or so uh, off the coast of the East Coast ports now, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's ship, crazy, right? So there's still there's still a lot of um, uh, panic and desire to get things moving. I mean, I, I, I speak with people internationally, what they're shipping as well. And, you know, it, it, getting capacity uh, is difficult still, mm -hmm. right, to move things. So you're going to pay more. Yep. Um, and the other thing, once once the public or once the, and, and we're talking about the business world, once the business world gets used to something, it's something, it's hard for them to get unused to it, right? It, 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 it takes a little while for it to filter. So I, I would expect them to eventually lag and change. But right now, um, the, their supply chains are screwed up so bad, and there's still people waiting for for things. And you know, we just heard yesterday about how a bunch of couches that were bought were were brand spanking new and never even made it to the showroom floor. They just went right to a thrift shop because they're out of style already. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, that was the big one we were talking about. They're out about. of season, I suppose. Yeah. It was you know, it's not like they were I mean, it's bought a like hundred years ago and now they're uh, Halloween costumes, right? I mean, if yeah. they weren't ordered like in. June or even earlier on the boat in June or er, earlier. You used to joke. What do you think is going to happen? I said, well, Big Lots is going to have some really cool merchandise. And look at it. It's yeah, it, it's, <laughs> and it is. And I think one thing, to, I mean, to keep in mind when we look at those contract rates, they don't include fuel, and we have seen. Uh -uh. So they aren't adjusted for any fuel surcharges or anything like that. I think one interesting thing we're coming up against is earnings. Right, and we're going to coming up against earnings, uh, and you got fuel, and you've got the wild fluctuations in fuel, fuel, which which affects earnings of enterprise carriers. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how that that yeah. pans out, and it, how that fuel line looks, and it affects shippers. I mean, on both sides, it, it absolutely right? I mean, does. Yes, you kind of you kind of get into that that discussion of like, I think what we're going to hear, especially on the shipper side, is. A lot of talk around supply chain constraints and yeah. rising fuel prices. I Absolutely. think those are going to be two headline things that every big retail shipper, CPG company, <clears> things <throat> like that. And then they're going to talk about other input costs because it's not just fuel. I mean, fuel is obviously one impact. Of but it. fuel affects all of their raw goods inputs, True. right? True. So. Yeah, and then I mean, but then you, you got have every disruption. other raw impact. Yeah. For the most part, it's increasing. I mean, there are a few in the recent producer price index that went down month over month. But I mean, ultimately it seemed like everything was up. I, yeah. I know that number hit 10% uh, over the course of the past year. And obviously that leads CPI, right? So are we sure. headed to 10% inflation for the consumer? I don't know if we get that high, but it I sure mean, seems like we are headed should, higher. It seems like we could. It really seems like we could. So awesome. Well, Michael, I thank you so much for hey, joining hey, me today. It was a, it was a pleasure. I do it anytime, man. Awesome. No, I'll you dress got, better next time. I wasn't. 
I know you've got what the truck this afternoon. Yeah. But so looking forward to that. But we're going to take a quick break here and we'll be back more with uh, Freight Waves now.